Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at ANSYS with Nermin Salemovich and Anand Raman, who are going to talk today about electromagnetic challenges in high-speed designs. So Nerman, how big a problem is electromagnetic interference, and where do you see it showing up? So we basically see it in a wide range of applications, ranging from anything that is high-speed, including 5G, AI, CERDES, and anything else that is on the latest and greatest technology nodes, higher frequencies, and low power. Was the problem there before, or is this brand new? The problem has always been there, with the difference now that the problem is getting worse and worse with higher frequencies and lower nodes, and uh, we have more radios crammed together on, on the same chip. So the insulation layers are thinner, the transistors are packed more tightly together, and there's also much more sensitivity with uh, lower tolerances due to uh, lower voltage and things like that, right? Yes, that's, that's correct. So Anand, what do we do about this? It's been a problem for a while, so how do we solve it? A uh, great question. So the, the thing is that, it's like Nerman said before, this is not a brand new problem. The problem has existed. People have solved it in a couple of different ways in the past. In the past, they have used point tools uh, to isolate little pieces of the design. Uh, they have built much higher than needed margins into their design flow and gotten away with it. What's happening now is that uh, the margins are getting much tighter, uh, the costs are exploding, and piecemealing the problem is no longer uh, uh, sufficient. So what this requires is a significant rethink of the methodology. Need to do EM more often, EM analysis more often and early. That's the only way out, so it requires a shift in methodology and a whole new class of tools. So you're looking at this in the context of a system, but you're also looking at this because these are new technologies in the context of development of these technologies as they go forward. So what you develop today may not be uh, a static design. It may evolve with new algorithms. Uh, it may be put into new dip, uh, different kind of devices with new different technologies. Are the problems still the same? Do you still have to tackle them one by one or do you now, because they do have to be done in a system context? Uh, the core problem remains the same. You have a complex system operating at high frequencies that leads to very difficult to predict, I mean, using you know, a priori knowledge or experience, very difficult to predict uh, couplings and interference that, that, that can cause chip failures. Add to this that the same trends in packaging, in, um, in processing technology, uh, in complexity are also driving uh, other problems, uh, adjacent problems like thermal and uh, uh, power, uh, et cetera, you do have to look at it from a system perspective. You have to make sure that each of these problems are not treated in isolation and are being co-analyzed and solved in a consistent, systematic way. So why don't we draw this out? Sure. So Nerman, what are we looking at here? So, um, in a typical design, we might have multiple channels that couple with one another, where we have, can face jitter problems, we can face harmonic mixing pro uh, products, we can see the VCO deterioration, VCO performance, VCO pulling, and uh, a variety of different electromagnetic crosstalk problems. So let's drill down into this. What does this look like in the real world? So typically, if we want to attack these type of problems, we need to look at much larger layouts. Uh, for instance, we have layouts which are five by five millimeters. They have tens of metal layers. So we, in order to capture such effects, we need to be able to include much larger layouts which have not been able to be covered by uh, tools in the past. And this is getting much denser than what it was in the past, in part because it's no longer just a standard von Neumann layout, right? Now we have lots of different processors, lots of different memories, and you have the whole idea is you architect these things for data movement as opposed to just the, the basic components in the ship. Yes, that is correct. The industry tr trend is integrating more and more functionality which includes different components onto a even much smaller area, which means that all the components are getting closer to one another, which makes them vulnerable to be attacked by other parts of the chip. 
So Anand, this is a system level problem. It's no longer just a single device that you're looking at. You now have to look at it in context. How do you do that? This is a very complicated problem. Absolutely. The, uh, the, the point is, you, like you said, you, you cannot focus on just one uh, piece at a time. You have to uh, look at it in, in a system context. What does that mean? It means that from the very beginning of the design flow, there has to be uh, electromagnetic awareness. Uh, the, the individual pieces have to be built accurately. That, that's always been true. But when you start building up these systems, even at the block level, you need to be analyzing uh, quickly and accurately what the impact of, of the neighborhood of that device is. And as you build up from individual blocks to a system, you still need to maintain that rigor and that process to be able to quickly analyze identify the source of the problem and resolve it. Because if you wait till the very end, uh, it's going to be impossible to solve. So now you've got more things that have to be done concurrently than you did in the past, right? That's exactly right. You have to not just think of it as, I'm going to do some, a bunch of design, I'm going to go do layout, and then once it's all nice and more or less complete, I'm going to do a physical analysis and verification uh, sign-off step. It doesn't work that way anymore. You have to be analyzing and de designing in the same beat or in the same cycle. So Anand, what does this look like in a system context? Uh, let me draw it out. Um, like we said before, it's really important to be able to build up, synthesize, and create uh, accurate individual components. But then you have to take these individual components and put them in the context of other such components, key routing into, let's say, a block which means that as you're building up this layout and as you're building up this block, you need to be constantly uh, analyzing it from an EM perspective, optimizing the layout, uh, and let's say you even get up to the block, then you have to assemble multiple instances of these blocks into a larger system. So at all these, at, at all these stages, you need to keep uh, analyzing uh, the design from an EM perspective to make sure that you're still meeting spec. Exactly. So as we scale up, as the chip becomes more complex and complex and grows in size, we really need a solution that helps the designer identify critical parts of the layout, which the designer has to work on in order to mitigate electromagnetic crosstalk. So let's make this even more complicated. What happens when you start dropping the powers? So when the, the power is dropped, the circuits become more sensitive. The, the circuitry is less prone to little disturbances. For example, the clocks. We need a capability and tools in order to capture and analyze low coupling and low voltage effects on chip accurately. So what happens with packaging, which is becoming a bigger issue in all of this too, right? Now it has to be considered in conjunction with the chip, the system, as well as the package. Yeah, so far our discussion has sort of been restricted to uh, on chip. However, you're exactly right. This chip has to go into a system somewhere. And there's two sort of uh, areas we need to uh, speak to. One is that the packaging technology by itself is getting extremely sophisticated. Think about uh, 3DIC, um, wafer on wafer, or info, there's COAS, any number of extremely complex capabilities where multiple dies and interposers are being put together. This just raises the stakes because the complexity of the system has gone up significantly and the need to analyze this, uh, analyze EM effects has become um, more important. So it's not just like you're looking at the package itself as the chip is already built. You're trying to compare different things of if I use this type of packaging uh, approach versus this type of packaging approach, what's the impact? And that has to be not only for the package, it's also the package in the context of the system and with the chips that are being used inside the package. Uh, correct. So apart from just stacking multiple dies together and putting interposers between them, there's also the need to then take this piece of silicon and put it into a package which then goes into a PCB, which means you have to have a unified methodology and flow that not only looks at the problem in the chip context, is it's able to somehow abstract what's happening from the package and, and PCB level into the chip and vice versa. While you're designing the package, you have a reasonable handoff and abstraction from the chip side so that you can optimize the package in the context of the chip. In the past, what we did was we developed chips and they went into a socket and we really had no idea where they were going. 
more and more these are customized type of de designs and you do have more insight into how that's going to play out in the, the real world and how it's going to be used. Does that affect what you do here? Absolutely, yes. Uh, this is becoming a real challenge in the industry today. We were previously able to isolate the chip design house from the package design house and then a totally different system design house. What's happening more and more is either individual companies are taking on the whole stack in order to be able to optimize across, or they're having to break down boundaries between these companies in order to share sufficient data and have clean handoffs so that each one of them can do their job efficiently and optimize their portion of the design in the context of whatever is adjacent to them. And it gets even more complicated than that because now you have to look at different use cases. How is this chip going to be used in this package, in this system, at different times and at different places too, right? Particularly in automotive where you may be driving in Fairbanks, Alaska or somewhere in the desert in Egypt. Absolutely. So you do touch upon an important point. The operating conditions do vary wildly, but it, there's an ad additional nuance. The same silicon IP needs to be used in multiple different packaging scenarios because the application space or the end user of that particular IP is slightly different, which then raises the challenge to the IP house to be able to qualify their IP product for a variety of different uh, package scenarios. So now you're looking at a matrix that really runs in four dimensions because as it's used and used differently, that also has an impact too, right? So there's, uh, you're absolutely right. There's uh, aging effects to be concern, uh, considered. There's reliability to be considered. Uh, there's the thermal impact. There's uh, mechanical vibrations that need to be uh, factored in. All of this points to a lot of simulation that needs to be done at the system level, at the package level, at the chip level, in order to, be, uh, to have confidence that you, ha that you have a good product. How do you know when you're done? How do you know this is going to work? The only way that you will ultimately know it's going to work is when you have high confidence that you have managed to simulate every possible condition under which this particular system is going to be used and that you have applied as much simulation technology as is available and, and, and can be used in order to sign off on uh, the design from all these perspectives at the same time. So, Nerman, do we have the tools and do we have the expertise in order to make all this work? Great question. So, we have, we have all of those. However, what the challenge here is to seamlessly collect, connect all the pieces together from the beginning till the end, such that the design community has a easy to use, efficient, and well worked out design methodology to address the current needs. Nerman Salemovich and Anand Raman, thank you very much for a great explanation. Thanks, Ed. Thank you.